So in applications, you often end up needing pagination for a variety of reasons, mainly because A, you can't show that much data in a UI, especially in React before the entire browser starts slowing down. And B, it just doesn't make sense to send over that much data in waste bandwidth. That's more cost for your server operational costs. And also it takes longer for stuff to load in the front end. So I wanna walk you through how I got pagination set up in this starter kit. We have a simple page where we can browse for different uh, groups. And over here, when there's multiple pages that show up, you can go ahead and paginate through them like this. When you get to the final page, the next button goes away. You can paginate back. You can kind of skip back to a page. So that's about it. It's a very basic pagination implementation, but I did want to walk you through because I do have it set up with like searching. So you can search for different things and based on the results, um, you'll get back like one or two. And for this example, I do have it set to only show two results, but that is configurable in the back end. So if I change this to like six, I think we could potentially the six groups, click next, and then we see the final two because I only created eight. So how does this work in Next.js? Well, basically I have a browse page which takes in some search params and we take in a search and a page number. Okay, so you might have noticed as I'm clicking next and previous, this page one in the URL is being incremented and decremented. If I click next, it goes from a one to a two, like that. And basically we use that page information to pass it to our database query so we can get a limit and an offset of how much data we're gonna get back from our database. So here you can see I'm parsing that int here or defaulting it to one if it doesn't exist. And then later we pass that down to my groups list, which is basically doing a database call. So let's kind of dive into this function and that page is passed in like this. And over here we have a function that's actually doing a drizzle database call. So this database query uses the search that the person typed into the input box over here. And it tries to find any group that has that search string in the name of the group. And then uh, if the search is not defined, we just go ahead and just return back everything. But the main takeaway for pagination is down here, when we do the database query, we basically say limit six results or whatever you know number this is set to, and then also provide an offset. So if it's page one, we're gonna get the first zero through fifth index results. If it's page two, we're gonna get one times six. So starting an offset of six and then get six from there because it is zero base index, right? So page one is zero through five, page two is six through 11. Second thing I'm doing is I wanna figure out how many total pages would be when a user is searching for this particular criteria. So I need to do a separate select count star using that same condition here. And then I can return both the total amount of data that's returned from that query, and then also how many we're currently getting in a page. And finally, all the data right here. Okay, so let's go back to the front end because now we're gonna have all that data. We have data per page in total. And we use that and we pass it to a pagination component. You see here we pass in the page and then also the total pages. So the group pagination, I basically took the ShadCN pagination component and I modified it a little bit to add my own uh, implementation and custom logic, but you could probably find a paginator online that's built for React and it'll work probably better than what I've done. But based on the current page that you're on and also how many total pages there are, it'll either hide or show the next and previous buttons and then it'll show one extra page in front and one page previous in the bottom down here. So notice that it's showing the one that was previously and then it always has the center one highlighted. But the main thing to point out is that when you click on one of these buttons, basically we just redirect back to the same page and we make sure that we either increment or decrement the page and we also persist the search parameter so that we don't lose that when it's trying to refetch the data. So click on this button basically just redirects back to the same page and then the backend is going to refetch that data, re-render the React Server component and show that new data to the user. That's basically the idea. You can also apply this to infinite scrolling. So basically you would do the same thing where when you get to a certain breakpoint in your page, certain line height, I guess you could say, you go ahead and kick off another request and say fetch more data for page two. If I'm currently on page one, you say fetch for page two. Then they keep scrolling some more and you say, okay, well fetch for page three. And then you end up just adding those all together in a giant array so you can have the user scroll back up and see all the previous groups. But again, you do need to be careful with uh, infinite scrolling because at some point you're probably gonna hit a limit with React where you have too many DOM elements displayed on the page. You're gonna get a page slowdown and you're gonna to have to do some type of like list virtualization or delete things from the uh, previous pages that aren't even on the, the viewport right now.
Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little overview on pagination. Hope to see you guys implement it in your own applications. Have a good day. Happy coding.